on is different if you hey, smoke Matt. it. Hey, Matt. <laughs> Matt. Matt. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. This is so rude. Tell Matt you love him. I love you, Matt. I'm so sad that I dragged you into this. And even though I did it with no malice. Say Matt Ruskin. 100%. Matt Ruskin. With jest. Matt Ruskin, I didn't do this to be mean. I just did this because that's my nature. I am the scorpion. You are the frog. This is how shit goes down. I didn't mean to do this. Miami, and there's a wall of water in front of you. That's Andy Dick. Yes. He's a wall of water in Miami talking about your dick. That's so funny. I love it. Talking about me? <clears throat> talking about you making me uncomfortable. Isn't there yeah. But you don't get uncomfortable. That's one thing I like about you. you, you well, really, I'm fine. You're totally fine. You're not uncomfortable, are you? No, no. You no. never, uh, in all the years I've known you, no. you never get uncomfortable. No, I'm pretty open minded person. Violent. <laughs> Sometimes you have, I think you've pushed me or gotten violent, but you know. I only pushed you out of my door <clears throat> while you had your dick in your hand, you crazy <laughs> fuck. Take it easy. <laughs> Take it easy. You accuse me of being violent, but you don't want to own up to what causes the, the reaction to you. You're not violent anymore. No, I'm much more, <clears throat> much more mellow now. Thank just, you, thank I, you, marijuana. It's marijuana, it's also the tank. That is the real kids. root of the, the, the issue. Sure. That's yeah. the real, real root of the you issue. You see it every day. You see it in adults. You go, you All can right. tell right away, like, you're really bad. Uh, again, it's not a personal problem. It's in the very nature of the world. And in the Tibetan book of living and dying, the um, Sogyal Rinpoche says that uh, the greatest achievement, he says, of our Western civilization, he says, the greatest uh, achievement of modern culture, he says, is the brilliant selling of samsara. Samsara meaning the, 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 the Sanskrit term for suffering. So that the greatest achievement of our culture, he says, is the brilliant selling of suffering. And it's barren distractions. Modern society seems to me, he says, a, a celebration of all the things that lead away from truth, make truth hard to live for, and discourage people even from believing it exists. So that the very culture we live in denies that there's truth, makes people hungry, hurts people, leaves them isolated, therefore empty, therefore wanting satisfaction from the outside, therefore addicted, and then it creates all these products and all these activities and all these cultural diversions to fill the very emptiness that it creates. And then they say, that selfishness is the nature of human beings. And there's the complete circle of the ideology. Well, as Eckhart points out, that every addiction arises from an unconscious refusal to face and move through your own pain. Every addiction starts with pain and ends with pain. And uh, as I've often said in the downtown east side, I, where I worked for 10 years, I hardly met any woman, and really, maybe one, I, I remember one, meeting one, who said she had not been sexually abused, everybody else had been. So that the greater the pain, the greater the addiction. And that pain always goes way, way back. There's a very interesting relationship between the word attachment and the word attachment. In Buddhist terms, attachment is the craving and the holding on to things Un in, in an unhealthy way. We're attached to our, our possessions, we're attached to uh, our looks, we're attached to all the things that are passing and evanescent, temporary and unsatisfying. And that's what creates suffering, is the attachment. So there's that word attachment in the Buddhist sense. Then there's the word attachment in the modern psychological sense. And attachment means love. Attachment means the drive to be close to somebody in order to be taken care of or in order to take care of. So that in my book with Gordon Neufeld on Hold On To Your Kids about, about the need for children to attach to parents and, and what happens when that attachment is lost, we're talking about attachment in a positive sense. It's very interesting that the same word is used because the reality is the less you have of that positive attachment, the more you're going to have of the negative attachment. 
So the degree to which you attach to food, the degree to which you attach to substances, the degree to which you attach to attention, the degree to which you attach to television, uh, any external behavior. And as, one, as somebody said, all addictions are ways of trying to get from the outside, trying to solve your problems from the outside. So the, the more attached you are to getting something from the outside, the more it means that you never had in the first place the attachment in the positive sense. I was socially retarded. I didn't have like anything going on. Like I wasn't academically inclined. I didn't like school. I just moved into a new neighborhood when I was 14. I felt ostracized. I didn't feel like I was. I didn't have any friends. Boston? Yeah. yeah. Well, I was in Newton, so where I was. Uh, it was a suburb of Boston. So it was like you could say like I sacrificed, but it wasn't like I had all these friends that I couldn't hang out with, and I had like this family that was missing me. No, I was like you know my parents were. I was a latchkey kid, so my parents were working all day. And you know, I would, I just didn't, I didn't have anything else. So I found this one thing that I felt like could give me some value. I could have some, I, I felt like I had some personal worth from this, yeah. from getting good at something. And then once I got good at it, it was like, wow, this is the first thing that I've ever done that gives me like a good feeling by being good at. Whereas like my life before that was kind of depressing. It was like going from one community to another, constantly moving, no friends, being bullied. I hated all of that. And then the being bullied part is what led me into martial arts. And just being nervous all the time, being yeah. scared of people. You yeah. know, and I wasn't a big guy, I was little. Dude, we're coming into another different age. Where's the jet packs? Oh, there's jet packs. Show me jet packs. <laughs> this is a lot of vapor dude, talk. Dude, you can still Come on now. There's a lot of vapor talk until I get You've a You've seen the biotechnology and the computer sure, technology come along. So, on. so you, you will be able to extend your lifespan as long as you'd like. Right. So we're saying this is not going to take place necessarily if we open up all the borders and everyone comes over here. We have crazy civil disobedience and war in America because there's people who have, uh, you know, lived a privileged life all their life. Now all of a sudden people are swarming in by the millions. Well, you know what it'd be like if the borders opened up? It would be chaos. But the borders millions are already open, people, Joe. But they're not really open. Yes, they are. Anyone that, that wants to come into this country can come into this country anytime they want. No, they, they have to have a visa. They no, have you don't. To have, you, you can don't walk across the border. You don't have to have some you, sort of a fucking passport to come to America. No, no. Like you fly like in from Taiwan. You can just fly okay. in with no. Well, pay there's off. flying in, but there's walking across yeah, the border. How you going to walk from Taiwan? Well, you, you fly, fly to Mexico, Mexico, or you fly to Canada, or you fly to you walk across to Alaska. There's all you kinds of ways to get. Is there a border patrol in Mexico? They, 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 uh, catch they can't every get, day. but they cannot get everybody. Right? Yeah, but there's millions of people. They're gonna fucking do something but about it. But that's only because this you. you the, the scarcity thing. Once, Dude, once the scarcity thing is over. There's a huge difference to what's going on right now in open borders. It's not true. It's not open. People can't just fly in and uncheck yes, as much they as they every want. Day. They can't. You they can't do. just fly in and immigrate here they from do. Japan right they now. They do. They do. You have to have papers. You don't have to have papers. You don't have to have a passport to land there are, in America. There are literally you hundreds you of thousands of people. You don't have to have a passport people. to fly from another country. Yeah, okay, if you want to fly in, in that's the, ridiculous. If you want to fly in through all the It's very all difficult to listen to anything like. you have to say right now. <laughs> You're telling me that you can just fly in from Saudi Arabia, sure. no passport, sure, people thousands of planes full, and everybody lands, you just they let them freely and they disperse. No, them. not throughout the not through the airports, but you can walk right across the border. From so what? Mex day. From Mexico or Canada. Just pretend you're a Mexican and looks like an Arab. And we just walk in, dude. Come on, man. You know it's not that bad. fucking easy. Yes, I'm saying is. if it was open, it's not open. It is open. I'm saying if they let everyone in. <laughs> You're saying if the government You're said... a little crazy. You know? <laughs> I, I That's know the I, problem with is. talking to you. That's the problem with talking to you. You're not really rational. Oh, really? No, 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 no. You're not really rational. No, no, no. You want to be right about all these things. Okay. Because you think about these things all the time. Dude. And you don't listen to anybody's opinion. <laughs> yes. You just want to be right. It's like you, dude. It's oh, exactly. Like you. Touch me again, and I'm going to choke you out on camera. <laughs> What's on now? Is that you good? Is that you good? I'm going to get a bell from this one. <laughs> You're a good sport, man. <laughs> Where's your gun, dude? No gun, man. Yeah, help yourself out. Not in California. You know you aren't gonna hurt me. You're totally in control. You were taking fun, man. You're still blasting it up. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs>
you do that again if I touch it then? <laughs> What's the play too? Dude, that was fucking awesome, man. You're fun, man. You're totally blast and a half. Fuck yeah. It's a little crazy. <laughs> Fuck a little quiet. crazy. Oh, a lot of crazy. <laughs> See, right now we learn uh, more about Chris, that little altercation, than we could have talking to a normal person awesome. for hours and hours. Awesome, dude. I know how to drag awesome. up the crazy. <laughs> You're totally cool, man. You're totally cool. <laughs> I got crazy radar. <laughs> didn't you do more political humor and Ray Goulding said how could we make that funnier yeah. do you feel that way about President Bush well I, I use the sledgehammer I don't bother with the rapier on Bush and I don't really do a lot of political humor yeah. but I have some glancing blows in, in the current show that, that I'm developing and uh, w one of them is the reference to him as Governor Bush and the fact that I will always think of him no matter where they hang his portrait no matter where they put his statue that's what he is he's Governor Bush because that's the last elected office he held legally in this country so <laughs> Uh, I, I like getting, I like moving in and really hurting them. Yeah. I, I don't I don't like this. Let's be cute and let's be clever. I like smashing them. That's the only way to take care of them. The other day, and speaking of smashing things, I quoted in this newscast, first item in the newscast, the seven story, uh, seven words you can't say on television, mm -hmm. the story of them, and the fact that everybody forgets that right. the first part of that story is the guy who had his phone tapped and would answer the phone, bleep Hoover. Yeah. We're back there. How did we get back to the same position that we were when you made that joke originally in the 70s? You, you're talking about wiretapping and yeah. spying on people. Yeah. Well, I don't know that we ever really left. I see, I, I don't really, I don't think that Frank Church committee really did any good. I, I don't think all of these reforms, I think power does what it wants. Power does what it wants. And now they're just more naked about it. Now they just put it right out front and say, this is this is what we're doing to you folks. It's, um, you know, th this country's finished. It's been f sliding downhill a long time. And everybody's got a cell phone that makes pancakes, so they don't want to rock the boat. <laughs> they don't want to make any trouble. The people have been bought off by gizmos and toys in this country, and no one, no one questions things anymore. Seriously, that's what I love about your show. I mean, you bring the, you bring the thing right to them, and that, that's what, that's the only way to do it. If you do